Can you tell the difference between a band 6 and a band 8 or 9 IELTS writing essay? You're probably saying, of course, but really, can you? I've noticed that part of the problem with IELTS writing is not just that test takers can't do what they need to do, but in many cases, their perception of what would bring them a higher score is wrong. So today I want to give you four keys to mastering your IELTS writing task 2 essays. I've prepared a great exercise for you that will help you understand what a good piece of writing, I mean a band 8 at least, actually is. We're going to take one essay. For each key, I'm going to show you two versions of the same essay paragraph and you need to find the good one. It's us here. Let's get started. The first key is about how well you respond to your task, officially called task response. First of all, we need a task. And I've chosen one of the more complicated types, two views and your opinion. Some people prefer to work for the same organization all their working life. Others think it's better to work for different organizations. Discuss both these views and give your own opinion. Write at least 250 words, give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge and experience. In this type of task, you must do three things. Discuss the first view, discuss the second view, it may not be obvious, but you must discuss not only the view you agree with, but both views and give your own opinion. I'd like to show you two versions of a paragraph about working for the same organization. The ideas are the same in both. Here they are. We have some pros. Stability and security, good company pension, chances of internal promotion, good understanding of how the organization functions. We also have some cons. When you know your company too well, things begin to annoy you and you get bored. Uh, lack of challenge if you're stuck in one position, your career stagnates, no incentive to learn and develop new skills. We have more than enough here. So these are the two versions of the first body paragraph. Which one is a great response to this task? And which one is so-so? I challenge you to find it. Pause the video now, read them, and then once you're certain, vote in the comments. Question 1. Answer A or B? So, what do you think? Which paragraph addresses the task better and would get a higher score? If you're not sure and you're thinking, wait, first I need to know what IELTS examiners consider to be a great or not so great task response. Then I say this is a big step in the right direction. Let me tell you what matters. First of all, as a task response descriptors put it, it is essential that we answer or address all parts of the task and offer what they call a well-developed for a band 8 or a fully developed for a band 9 response to the question. Pretty vague, isn't it? Let's see what you lose your points for looking at a band 6. Each point has the good part in green and the bad part in red. Addresses all parts of the task. Remember, view 1, view 2, your opinion. Although some parts may be more fully covered than others. So you should write enough about each part presents a relevant position, although the conclusions may become unclear or repetitive. Presents relevant main ideas, but some may be inadequately developed or unclear. So you lose points if you don't spend enough time writing about one part of your task, or if your ideas are unclear or lacking focus or not developed. There is more to it, but I guess you're getting the picture. 
Coming back to our two paragraphs, which one do you prefer? The first one goes on too much. It reads like a list of ideas. First this, and then this, and then this, and then... So it's quite repetitive and doesn't go in depth. And in some places, it lacks focus. Why mention that such people are conservative? It's irrelevant. And the board or teacher example is not original at all. The second paragraph looks much more compact and it follows up the main idea with a good example. And all these supporting points work, well, supporting the main point. Paragraph B is much better. What we must keep in mind is that IELTS writing task two is a test of your ability to put a logical argument together. It's looking for consistency, your ability not to lose track of your viewpoint. Let's go on to the second key. Coherence and cohesion. What does that mean? Your essay is coherent if it's logically organized. It's about your essay structure, how you group your ideas together. Your essay is cohesive if one point follows from another, if all your sentences are connected, if you don't jump from one point to another. Again, let me show you two versions of the same paragraph. Which one do you prefer? Which one has better coherence and cohesion? Pause, read and comment. Question 2A or B? A quick look at a band 9 perfection for coherence and cohesion tells us, well, nothing much. Uses cohesion in such a way that it attracts no attention. Skillfully manages paragraphing. So, the organization and flow are so good that we don't notice them. What do you think that really means? It might help if we look at the band 6. Uses cohesive devices effectively. Mm, cohesive devices are the ways to link your sentences. For example, linking words, however, furthermore, but, and. But cohesion within and or between sentences may be faulty or mechanical. So the cohesion is incorrect. May not always use referencing clearly and appropriately. Referencing is pronounce it, this, and you should use them instead of repeating the same noun. Or you should use phrases like this method, this problem, to refer to what you said before. So you use referencing, but sometimes unclearly or incorrectly for band six. Uses paragraphing, but not always logically. Arranges information and ideas coherently, and there is a clear overall progression. So you move from one idea to the next, from your introduction to your conclusion. In other words, a band 6 is given to those essays where the examiner notices errors and a lack of clarity. It gets worse at a band 5. The errors become too obvious. Makes inadequate, inaccurate or overuse of cohesive devices. So our cohesive devices again, linking words, pronouns and so on. Their use is insufficient, there are simply not enough of them, or they are used incorrectly, or there are too many of them. And I think those who don't prepare for the test enough tend not to use enough linkers and may not know a suitable linker when they need one. But there is the opposite problem. When test takers try too hard and overuse their linkers. That's exactly the problem in our paragraph A. Not a complete disaster, but a little over repetitive. Why have a cohesive device, a connector, at the beginning of every sentence? Have a look at them. However, furthermore, apart from that, although, therefore, that's repetitive and unnecessary. It's overdone. Also, 
Look at this long introduction to the first sentence in gray. It doesn't give any new information. Just remove it. Why it's not clear, we don't know why though. Remove it. Paragraph B is much clearer. Notice how we use substitution. Often do so, change jobs frequently. And relative pronouns. This in the last sentence meaning uh, an improved package in salary terms. This makes the paragraph more natural and easier to read. And the number of connectors is restricted to just. However, to introduce the contrast with the previous paragraph. That's what we need, very clear writing. On to vocabulary. The moment has come to express our point of view in the essay. Very important. In my courses, I actually show two ways to do it. Inside your other body paragraphs, the option which I think most students prefer, or in a separate paragraph. In this lesson, we have a separate paragraph. As usual, I have two examples for you. Which one would get a higher score for its vocabulary? Pause to read now. So which one is a better example, A or B? I think there is a common misconception that you need to use long words to impress the examiner so much that they will give a band 8 or 9 or at least a 7. And that it's good to use as many idiomatic expressions as possible. But that's not true. Look at band 9 uses a wide range of vocabulary with very natural and sophisticated control of lexical features. Rare minor errors occur only as slips. It mentions natural control of the language and that mistakes are only accidental, not because you don't know how to use a word. In fact, the task descriptors do mention less common vocabulary attempts to use less common vocabulary, but with some inaccuracy, band 6. So less common vocabulary and use of collocations are seen as positive. But less common doesn't mean very rare words only used by someone who swallowed the dictionary. I think it means you can express exactly what you want. It's a question of precision, of expressing what you mean in the best possible way. And it's just not the same as trying to show off your knowledge of long and rare words. Coming back to our examples, the second one clearly has some big words. You can see them in red, but it feels like uh, they're just inserted into a paragraph with very simple language, phrases in gray. In real examples like that, there are many more mistakes as well. So this type of writing is not going to impress the examiner at all. Look at example A. It shows good use of precise terms and what's called an awareness of collocation or how words work together, which words you use together. Here are some examples. Rewarding loyalty, financial incentives, a position of trust, be counterproductive, seek new challenges, leading to stagnation. All these are common enough words used with precision in a particular context. Next, examiners also assess your grammar, officially called grammatical range and accuracy. Compare these two ways to conclude our essay. Which one is better from the grammatical point of view? Pause the video now. Okay, which one is better, A or B? Examiners assess your range and your accuracy. For band 9, there should be no mistakes and almost no mistakes for band 8. Band 7 produces frequent error-free sentences, so many sentences should have no mistakes. When we reach band 6, it says makes some errors in grammar and punctuation, but they rarely reduce communication. It's only when the number of mistakes 
begins to make the essay difficult to follow, that the examiner will think of band five. Errors will cause some difficulty for the reader. What about the range? Do we need to write as many complex sentences as possible? The warning signal is at band five, where it mentions only a limited range of structures and that complex sentences tend to be less accurate than simple sentences. Compare that to the wide range of structures with full flexibility and accuracy we are expected to use to deserve a band nine. So it doesn't say only complex structures. So what does it mean? It means that we must have a balance between accuracy and complexity without forgetting that there is nothing wrong with a simple sentence. Something many test takers do is try to be too clever and write as many complex sentences as possible. Unless your grammar is really top class, that's when you start making mistakes. So keep to what you know best. Coming back to our examples. The first example is just one very long sentence. It's overly complex and there is no need for this. This usually leads to mistakes. Our second version has two sentences and the message is much clearer. The four keys are task response, coherence and cohesion, vocabulary and grammar. That's what the examiners assess. And as you've probably noticed today, it's not only your English skills that matter, but also your essay writing skills and how well you can use your English to fulfill the requirements. If you'd like to learn how to meet each IELTS writing requirement, write your answers sentence by sentence and answer each type of task, check out my online courses. I'm going to link them below. Also, today you haven't seen a full essay, but I have a full model answer showing another two views and your opinion essay, and I'm gonna link that PDF below. Or you can watch a video explaining how to write an essay like this right here. And thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye.